Hello. There is so much estrogen in this room. My God. Hello, everyone. My name is Roslyn Rogers, and I am a certified nutritional consultant and board certified in integrative medicine. For many, many years, I had a private practice in New York, where I'm originally from, helping women and men push back their clock of aging by balancing their hormones naturally. When I moved to Arizona a few years ago, I was given this incredible opportunity to travel all over the United States and do these lectures. This is not just a job for me. It is my passion. And I would like to thank everybody for being here today because it's your presence that allows me to live what is my passion. And that is to try to make this a healthier place for us to live in. And I do this by bringing information of the risks of taking pharmaceutical drugs, especially HRT, hormone replacement therapy, and the benefits of using herbs and plants that you find in this store. These plants, or botanicals as we call them, have been around since the beginning of time. In contrast to medicine having a half-life of five years. What that means is what doctors learn in medical school and the drugs they tell you and me to take, half of all of that is gone in five or less years. Obsolete. That's a good thing because science is always evolving and new things are developed. But which half will be gone? Something somebody is taking right now I don't know about you, but I don't choose to live my life as a medical experiment or making money for pharmaceutical companies. I am not here to bash doctors because if I was having a heart attack, if I needed surgery, or I was in an accident, there would be no place I would rather be than in this country being taken care of by our doctors. Our imagery, our technology is incredible. But when it comes to hormones, especially women's hormones, they have not gotten it right. When estrogen first came out into the marketplace in the 1950s, it was a time that was known living better through chemistry. And if a woman 40 or over went to see her doctor for whatever symptom, she was given a prescription for hormone replacement therapy. Women got sick. And then they decided to put in a progestin. They called it progesterone, but it was not, and it is not. The progestin that you get in a prescription of HRT is an analog. It is a synthetic of our hormone. Women continue to get sick, but doctors said, you better take it because otherwise you'll dry up and prune out. So we didn't want to dry up and prune out, so we took this HRT, and we continued to get very ill. It did get rid of hot flashes. In 1997, a very large organization called the Women's Health Initiative Organization took over 16,000 women and put them on Premarin and Provera, the two very popular hormone replacement therapy drugs. They did not do the research to prove that something was wrong with taking them. They wanted to prove that if a woman took hormone replacement therapy, it would ward off heart disease. The study was supposed to last eight years. Five years into the study, the monitoring committee abruptly stopped it, saying that the risks were not worth the benefits. Stroke and blood clots increased. Heart attacks increased invasive breast cancer increased, women's breasts became so dense that even a mammography could not tell if there was a tumor. So in 2002, the study was stopped, doctors stopped writing prescriptions as readily, many of us women threw away the HRT. Today, they're right back into writing these prescriptions. 
5,500 women a day become menopausal. In about eight years, half the women in North America will be menopausal women. With this is not good for the men. Not good at all. But we are very strong and we are powerful and we do not have to squeeze them to the doctors saying you have to do this or you have to do that. No. My information today is going to be coming from Dr. John Lee. Dr. John Lee is pioneer of the importance of the seat of the Dr. John Lee is a pioneer, MD doctor, who began research of having an alternative to balance our hormones rather than taking hormone replacement therapy. He wrote three books. What your doctor may not tell you about breast cancer, what your doctor may not tell you about menopause, and what your doctor may not tell you about perimenopause. I was lucky enough to be trained by Dr. I was Dr. John Lee. He passed away a few years ago. We are facing epidemics in this country we today and in all industrialized in countries of breast cancer, diabetes, arthritis, ovarian and uterine cancer, and osteoporosis. These are new and diseases as we know them today. Years ago, only old women got breast cancer. So today, unfortunately, we know somebody 20, 30, 40 that's already had breast cancer. There is also an epidemic of men getting breast cancer. 90% of all breast cancers and ovarian cancers are estrogen-dominant tumors. Over 90% of men's prostate cancers are estrogen-dominant tumors. And also osteoporosis. By the time we reach menopause, 50% of us have already begun to lose bone. What's wrong? What is happening? Hopefully when you leave today, you will have a better idea of what is wrong and what you can do about it. Dr. John Lee said that the reason we have these epidemics today is because of industry where almost everything that we use on a daily basis comes from petroleum. Our clothing is made from petroleum. The shampoos, the body lotions, the conditioners, the aroma of candles, petroleum, expensive perfumes, petroleum. It's in the food we eat, the water we drink, and the air we breathe. Thousands and thousands of pounds that every one of us face on a daily basis of petroleum. Cannot get away from it. Unfortunately, these toxins that are emitted from petroleum behave like estrogen. We call them xeno, X. E N O xenoestrogen. They are very strong. They are very harmful, and they get into the body and make cells grow. And that is the number one reason why one in six women develop breast cancer today. The way that this happens, women especially have lots of receptor sites in the breast and in the ovaries, the uterus area of estrogen. A receptor site is like a lock. Our hormone of estrogen that we make naturally, a key that fits into these locks. Unfortunately, the environmental xenoestrogen are the same shape key as our own estrogen and they get into the cells because they fit right in. Our body doesn't know if it's what we're making or if it's coming from the environment. It only knows that all of the foods we eat and drink and the air we breathe, we wear clothing, we put body lotions on, 
It just gets into these cells and makes them grow, causing cancers and many, many other uncomfortable symptoms. Besides petroleum, there's another very important reason. Fifty years ago, all farm animals were given a patch of estrogen under the skin to make them grow bigger, fatter, faster. So if you're eating dairy or beef and it's not organic, you're eating the estrogen that has been given to that animal. So we have environmental xenoestrogens, we have our food, then many of us take birth control pills and many of us take hormone replacement therapy, more estrogen. So we have a very vast population of women, not only with these cancers, but estrogen dominant symptoms. And these are what you may be feeling. What I'm about to tell you are estrogen dominant symptoms, too much estrogen, and that is a negative. Hot flashes. Night sweats, cystic breasts, fibroid tumors, thyroid problems, sleeplessness, moodiness, endometriosis, PMS, PCOD, polycystic ovarian disease, desire to kill husbands. <laughs> <laughs> and the one way if what all of these things that I didn't that I just mentioned you didn't feel you had the one way that you can tell if you're really estrogen dominant is the fact that women gain from under the breast around the middle that is the first way to tell if you are estrogen dominant which makes you a very high statistic of getting, God forbid, a hormonal cancer or some of the symptoms. This is not a lecture about a hot flash or night sweat. What I do is to try to help people to push back their clock of aging. And if anybody is taking notes, please write this down. Hormones are chemical messengers that tell our body what to do, when to do it, and why. Our hormones rule over the entire endocrine system. The pituitary gland, the hypothalamus gland, the adrenal gland, the thyroid gland are all ruled by our hormones. If one hormone is out of balance, we are out of balance. So this is not just about sleeping better or a hot flash. This is about how to die young but as late in life as possible. Besides the quality of the food that we are eating, the next most important thing is to balance your hormones and it's very, very difficult today because of all the petroleum and the xenoestrogens that are everywhere. Dr. John Lee, 25 years ago, had 100 women that had some of the symptoms that I just mentioned. He had learned in medical school, if somebody had a hot flash or a night sweat, to put them on hormone replacement therapy. But he couldn't do it with these 100 women because they had already had breast cancer or gallbladder disease, and he didn't know what to do to make them feel better. But he had remembered going to a lecture years before and learning about natural progesterone cream that comes from the wild yam plant. And so Dr. John Lee put these hundred women on a progesterone cream and he monitored them for three years. He was amazed. Hot flashes, night sweats went away, thyroid, balance, the fat turned to energy. They slept better. When he had the women put it on cysts, he shrunk the cysts. He shrunk the fibroids. He was amazed. The one thing that happened that was the most miraculous, every one of the women using a cream of progesterone gained in the density of her bones. 
There is nothing better in this store to help women keep the density of their bone than progesterone. We need minerals, of course. Minerals help make stronger bones. But it is our hormone of progesterone that activates the cells that make new bones. Bone is living tissue. If your hair grows and your nails grow, we are capable of making new bone for the rest of our life. We make bone by cells. They look like Hackman. One is called an osteoclast. They go through the bone where they see an old bone. The osteoclast removes it. And behind the osteoclast, you have osteoblasts. Where they see little spaces, the osteoblast fills it with new, stronger bone. In females, it is our hormone of progesterone that activates osteoblasts in making new, stronger bone. In men, it's more testosterone. There is nothing better. I know our doctors have told us that it's estrogen that makes new bone. That's ridiculous. Estrogen has very little to do with making new bone. What estrogen does do is stop the loss of bone longer. Women peak with the density of our bone at 35 years old. This is in the medical books. If we peak at 35 and every year thus after we decline a percentage, we have plenty of estrogen when we're 35 years old. If it was estrogen, we would not peak at 35. And so Dr. John Lee went into his research and he was the one who discovered this and how we make bone. And he went all over the world. That's why Suzanne Summers wrote her 25 books. It's been all over Dr. Oz, the use of progesterone, Oprah. It's not voodoo anymore. We have all heard about bioidentical hormones. Progesterone made from a wild yam plant is a bioidentical hormone. What is progesterone? What is this miracle? Progesterone is a sex or steroid hormone. Estrogen is a sex or steroid hormone that makes a female come out looking like a girl. Testosterone is predominantly the man's hormone that makes a man come out looking like a man. Women need a little testosterone for our libido, but predominantly it's a man's hormone. Progesterone is also a sex hormone, but it's different. Girl and boys bathe in it for nine months. Girls come out looking like girls. Guys come out looking like guys. It's the progestation period. That is when a female is making 300 to 400 milligrams every single day of the hormone of progesterone. Normally, a menstruating female makes 20 to 24 milligrams a day of progesterone. When we no longer have a period, either because of a hysterectomy or because of our age, and the ovaries stop producing eggs, we no longer make progesterone. We go to zero or near zero in the production of progesterone. We never stop making estrogen. When the ovaries stop producing eggs, the adrenal glands take over. We make estrogen for the rest of our life, even with a hysterectomy. We go down 40 to 50 percent, but we are always making estrogen. Then take into the account all the environmental estrogens and the food and the body lotions that we put on with the petroleum. We become very estrogen dominant. Progesterone hormone is the feel-good hormone. It's what gives us the beautiful glow when we're pregnant. I met doctors who are giving progesterone bioidentical to heal chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. I met a doctor who actually injects progesterone into the myelin sheath for people who have very severe pain 
and Life Extension, great organization, recently did research that when elderly men and women had brain trauma and they gave them progesterone, they healed the brain. They know that women do better after a stroke than men because women naturally have 20% more progesterone in our brain than men do. So progesterone is very safe. It helps us sleep. It helps get rid of excess water. And the job of progesterone is to oppose estrogen. We're not making any more. It's unopposed in the body. We have environmental xenos unopposed, and that is the reason for all the diseases of estrogen tumors and all the symptoms that we feel as our body is changing. And this is happening to younger and younger women and men. Men now have breasts. Years ago, we didn't see so many men with breasts. This is because they have been developing lots of estrogen receptors. Prostate cancer, estrogen dominant in tumors, the alligators in Florida, they're not able to procreate because the beta testes are small because of all the estrogen in the water. It's happening to the frogs. There's also information that boy babies that are born today, all, and I say this without any kind of judgment, are, are not born with the right amount of testosterone. Born and they have poor male identification. What are young male boys doing today? What are the teenagers doing today? When I was a young girl, they were running after you, they wanted you to kiss you. What are young girl? boys doing today? They're home playing computer games. Mm -hmm. That's because the testosterone has been affected. Younger and younger men are having problems there. Sorry? Their identity, of course, is really, really a problem. So I am a very, very big believer of using natural progesterone. It's bioidentical. Uh, again, remember that progesterone is always opposing estrogen. I am 71 years old. <laughs> I haven't had my plastic surgery yet. I am certainly planning on it, but I, I will. I do believe it. So I tell you this. I tell you. Thank you. I can, my sons are 46 and 49. I mean, I'm 49. How could they be 49? But anyway, I, I tell you this because I, I want you to have hope that we do not have to dry up, have our skins wrinkled, not feel wonderful just because we are menopausal. When you go to the doctor and you show him your fingers and you have nodules and you say, look, I have all these nodules, and the doctor says, well, it's, you have arthritis, you're 50. No, you don't have to have nodules. There is a way to push back that clock of aging. Believe me, besides food, and we all know how important it is to eat good food, the second most important thing is the balance of our hormones. It affects every part of the body. And progesterone is that hormone that can do it. It's very safe. Again, when we're pregnant, we make hundreds of milligrams. When we no longer have a period, we go to zero or near zero. Yes. I do recommend it for men. I'm not sure if they have it in this store, but this company, LifeFlow, does have a men's. Uh, while the question was asked about men, let me just give you a little information for women here who might have husbands or sons. <coughs> There's been great research now for men using progesterone. They found that when men use it, it actually wards off prostate cancer earlier. Uh, for, uh, to much later, and also men who get up all night urinating because of the thickening, the hypertrophy in the prostate, when they use men's progesterone, 
it thins out that thickening. They don't get up all night. So if your guys are using saw palmetto and pygeum and something else, put them on a progesterone also. They also found that men who use progesterone have libidos well into their 80s. So we're, what, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you how to have your libido too. Wait, yes. Oh, I'm going, oh. Yes. Okay, that's a great question. How does a wild, uh, progesterone cream compare to just taking and using a wild yam? A wild yam is not a hormone. And the research is showing that the wild yam actually turns to an estrogen. So, let me explain the difference. The way they make progesterone bioidentical. And what bioidentical means? The way our ovaries produce this hormone is the way the transdermal on the skin do it. When they looked under a microscope, they could not tell the difference of whether our ovaries were doing it or whether the cream was. They make the cream from a wild uh, yam plant, and it's not the wild yam potato that we eat. It's a radishy plant. They extract a fatty substance called diogenin, the fat from the wild yam. They take this fat to a laboratory and convert it to a progesterone USP. It must have the letters USP or it's not bioidentical progesterone. Those letters stand for United States Pharmacopoeia. The Pharmacopoeia Department has a certain weight in order for that to be deemed a bioidentical hormone. I want to tell you something very interesting. <coughs> All of our hormones are made from cholesterol. Cholesterol, all the hormones for men and women. The first process is cholesterol. So our doctors trying to get our cholesterol low is beyond ridiculous because we will all be on antidepressant medicine. When you go to your doctors, when you go to your doctor and you have your blood test once a year to see your levels, which are risk for heart disease, what you need to ask them to test is your C-reactive protein and your homocysteine level. Those are the two variables that show risk for heart attacks. It shows inflammation, and it's inflammation that causes a heart attack. I don't have to scream. I have a mic, and I'm still screaming. C, C, reactive, capital C, reactive protein, and homocysteine level. Those are the two um, blood that you need to know if you're at a high risk for having a heart attack. Yes, somebody had a question. Yes, they are. Men make it the same way. All hormones for men and women, the first process is cholesterol. And I'm going to tell you after that, yes. And the second is, is there a difference between getting the progesterone here on the shelf versus going to Wonderful question. Is there any difference with buying a progesterone on the shelf here or going to a compounding pharmacy? Yes and no. The yes part of the answer is, this is pre-measured at 20 milligrams. I like LifeFlow. The reason I like the LifeFlow company is because every time you pump down, you get 20 milligrams. That's the amount that Dr. John Lee said, approximately what we make, and that's what we should be putting back. If you go to a compounding pharmacy, they can make 100, 200 milligrams. Usually they make much, much more than is necessary. Sometimes they put in other hormones, and it's usually much more expensive. Compounding pharmacies 
if you have a script from a naturopathic doctor and you go to a compounding, they can either use wild yam or soy. We do not believe soy is good anymore. But again, it's just the amount of milligrams. Otherwise, the products are exactly the same. So, pro yes, one more question and then let me... Well, it depends if your doctor has prescribed a topical hormone cream. If you're buying it at a pharmacy, most likely it's progestin. Progestin is not our natural hormone. It causes problems. It's an analog. It's synthetic. So it all depends if it's compounded to be bio-identical, and this is a very important question because doctors know that they have to say certain words to you now, and it's not necessarily the truth. I was married to a physician, believe me. Doctors do not learn about this, and we can't blame them. They are protected by the FDA. So if you're going to a pharmacy, most, 99% of the time, you're not getting a natural bioidentical. Do not use it. Hopefully, listen, I'm not a doctor. I am a nutritionist. I'm bringing you information. I've had hundreds, probably thousands of women in the 25 years that I've been doing this. The book Suzanne Summers wrote, what Dr. Oz talks about, what Oprah spoke about, this is not synthetic hormones. It is totally different. The doctors learn what prescription to put you on by a pharmaceutical rep that comes into their office. And when I was married and worked at my husband's office, we were gifted gifts and trips and dinners if we wrote a certain amount of prescriptions in a certain period of time. But that's what they learn, so we cannot blame them. I have a lot to feel grateful for, and that is why I am in front of you. I have lost many friends from breast cancer. My dear sister-in-law had a double mastectomy. I come from Long Island, lots of breast cancer there. And this is the way I choose to give back to the universe, by giving you information. You can Google me. I have nothing to gain. I am not an employee of the Life Flow Company. I am an independent contractor and I do represent them because they sponsor me to go around the United States. The reason that I talk about their product is because I used this for 15 years. I loved it because it was the only one that I knew that was pre-measured. I didn't want guesswork. And so one thing happened in another and I became a spokesman. I don't make commission, I couldn't care, you know, I don't sell products. But I love LifeFlow for another reason. Besides the fact that it's pre-measured, it's micronized, which is what, a, what you would get at a compounding form, uh, pharmacy, which means it's cut into very small molecular pieces, so the absorption's there, and it's on a liposome, and it's clean. There's nothing in here from petroleum. It's very important when you go home tonight that you read about your shampoo, your conditioners, your body lotions. If it has a word paraben something, get rid of it. It's from petroleum. 90% what we put in on our skin gets absorbed. 90%, maybe 10% of what we swallow. So what we put on our skin is much more absorbable, especially when we're speaking of hormones. Hormones are fat-soluble. Before I forget, after cholesterol, the next hormone that is made from cholesterol is pregnenolone. Pregnenolone is a wonderful anti-aging hormone. And after preg is progesterone, and from progesterone we make a little estrogen, a little testosterone, a little cortisol, so it's a precursing hormone, and it's absolutely phenomenal to change your life. Yes.
great results after she used progesterone. This lady used it for many years and read that it wasn't wise. I wonder where you read it. You don't have to answer that, but I plan to use progesterone in I, however long I live because I've never lost bone. I'm very petite. I have like a chicken arm here. And many of the women who use progesterone, so many of us have never lost bone. And osteopenia and osteoporosis is everywhere you go. Women complain. My bones are thinning. This is new. And when you use progesterone, it's one. I have a couple of other things to talk about. It helps with your bone. So the directions, let me tell you how to use this right now. By the way, transdermal is powerful medicine. Powerful. When people went to Israel many years ago to bathe in the Dead Sea for rheumatism and arthritis, that was transdermal medicine. When you want to stop smoking, it's a patch. That's transdermal. In a hospital now, pain medicine, a patch. Even gynecologists now give synthetic HRT as a patch. And the power of using transdermal is because it doesn't create the first path of the liver. Anything you swallow creates the first path of the liver. When you put it on your skin, that does not happen. We do not need hormones in our liver because that's where the hormones take on a life of their own and create havoc in the body. So when you put it on your skin, it goes in the fat, goes into the bloodstream, and a little goes through the liver, through the blood, but it doesn't create what we call a first pass of the liver. That's the power. The way that we use it, if we have no more periods, you're finished with your periods, either because of a hysterectomy or because of an age, my protocol is to use a progesterone two to three months every single day. After we saturate your body, then the directions are three weeks on, one week off. Why are those the directions? Because we call this bioidentical. The week we had a period when we were younger, the progesterone gets very low. So in order to call something bioidentical, it has to emulate the way our bodies used to work. That's why the directions say three weeks on, one week off. However, if you have no period anymore and you do not feel as good on the week you're off of it, you do not have to come off. I don't sleep without progesterone so you don't have to come off of it. If somebody still has a cycle, many, many people that have cycles use it. Uh, for instance, if you're trying to become pregnant, it great help. For if you're perimenopause, you still have a cycle, but you're changing and you don't feel as well. Or a young woman who has PCOD, polycystic ovarian disease, lots of young girls have it, they have hair, overweight many times, they have all kinds of issues. Any woman who's doubling over with cramps or bad PMS can use it. So anybody that still has a cycle, they would use progesterone from the 12th to the 26th day from the first day they get their period. So this is how. If you got your cycle on November 1st, you would begin to use progesterone 12 days later on November 12th until November 26th or approximately two weeks. Is that clear? You start to bleed and you count that first day that you start your menses. You count 12 and on the 12th day we begin to use progesterone. Is it natural? Again, 
get the CD if you want and let, give it to her and let her listen. I have a CD here that I've, I've done. I don't get any money for this. It's 40 minutes with a lot of information. Really good. Yes. Go ahead. I have a lot to get to. Yes, go ahead. Uh, excuse me? Good. I don't have any. Pap smear and whatever, whatever. Okay, this is a good question. If it's not broken, do we fix it? Maybe, maybe not. The question is, any of the symptoms that I mentioned, um, vaginal dryness, uh, moodiness, weight gain, water retention, if something's not broken, there's 5% of women who just have such an incredible hormonal system, and that comes from their mothers and grandmothers, if it's not broken, you don't fix it, okay, really. But I'm going to talk about some other things. So it's, if you're feeling wonderful, if your bones are good, uh, your weight is good, it's very healthy. It's great for focusing. It's just wonderful. If somebody is finished with their periods, they're not making progesterone. It is a very important hormone. It's what opposes our estrogen. So you have to internalize this information and then make your decision. Really, there's no right or wrong. There is no downside. The only people that I would not suggest to use a cream, if anybody here tells me that they have had breast cancer or ovarian cancers, I'm not a doctor. I have no right to tell anybody that's had a cancer to use this. So what I would suggest that you do, you have to know if it was an estrogen-dominant tumor. It's in your records, and it's very important that you know. And then Google Dr. John Lee. See how he explains it. Dr. Jonathan Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, Life Extension. These are places to go to see if these doctors, these are MDs, use it with people that have had estrogen dominant tumors. So this has to be your own power and your own decision. Before, excuse me? The dosage of the men, if they, if you so choose to order it, I don't think they have it. It's half the amount, it's 10 milligrams, but they also put saw palmetto in the men. So I would not use a woman on a man because the men can actually convert it to an aromatase of estrogen. The saw palmetto in there stops that, so if the men are using it. Now, where you put these creams are on the body where your skin is thin. Palms, forearms, neck, chest, and between each thigh. Every night, it's better to use at night because it relaxes us and helps us sleep. Every night, you change the place. So tonight, you don't have to guess. You pump down, you put it on the palm. This is not the palm. That's the palm. The next night, a different place. The next night, another place. The next night, another place. Next night, another place. You must cycle because you do not want to saturate the receptors in one area. That's the only reason you want clean skin. Men, men should use it on the forehead or non-hairy areas. Figure that one out. <laughs> Actually, a good place... A good place for the men to use it is on the perineum, that flat surface between the anus and the testicles. 
That's the place that the men use it. They have a, a remarkable result. This is my favorite product. It's called Progesticare Complete. And each pump gives 20 milligrams of progesterone, 15 milligrams of pregnenolone, and 15 milligrams of 7-keto-DHEA. Why? <coughs> well, the progesterone is opposing estrogen. That's what progesterone does. The pregnenolone is very anti-aging, but specifically for focusing. <coughs> and 7-keto-DHEA, if we've all been listening to Dr. Oz, we know that 7-keto speeds up thermogenesis in the liver and it helps with weight management. So you have something here that's wonderful. Younger women, I like the plain progesterone. It doesn't matter if you start with this one or that one, but this is really for focusing and weight. Plain progesterone. I would... The age to begin to use a progesterone is if somebody has a cycle and they are having trouble with that cycle. Okay? could be a 12-year-old, a 14-year-old. We have young girls now, 8, 9 years old, getting breasts. They're not ready to have breasts and their periods. This is because of the estrogen. We're seeing it in the young people. Even infants, babies born, are born with little breasts. And how many men? I look around on the beach. How many men have breasts? They need bras. You know, this product, the Progesticare Complete, was actually developed for more mature women who have focusing problems who gain weight. But how many young girls have focusing problems? How many young girls are too heavy? And so it's not really age-related. Afterwards, it's really great. Okay, there's something here also that I do not want to forget to mention. It's called Estriol. The one major complaint of menopausal women is vaginal dryness. Urinary infections and incontinence. You sneeze and out comes a drop. The oh, oh I hit on something? Oh. The only thing that will heal the vaginal area is an estrogen. Estriol is one of the weak estrogens. By the way, estrogen is not the name of a hormone. It's the name of a classification of hormones, like an apple. You have a gala, you have a delicious, you have a Macintosh, you have many apples. We have many estrogens. We speak of three, estradiol, estrone, those are the stronger ones, and the very weak estrogen called estriol. Europe has used this for 35 years. It doesn't make cells grow. And it's incredible for healing the vaginal area. You can put this inside. It's very clean. There's no parabens in here, no petroleum. Or if you're not comfortable putting it inside, and one pump, pre-measured, gives you 0.75 milligrams of the weak estriol. Not even one milligram. The research is also showing, Google this, the more estriol a woman has in her body, the more we are protected from breast cancer. It's phenomenal. So please Google this. And when you go for your blood test, it does not tell you about estriol. Okay? We do not believe in doing blood work to test for hormones because what shows up in your blood is the free-forming hormones that are just going all over your body. Most of it is inactive. And we believe in either in a 24-hour urine test or in a saliva test. That's the way to really test. However, if you're menopausal, you don't have a period, there's no guesswork that you're not making progesterone. And if your vaginal area is dry, wonderful to use. Yes. Oh, yes, you should... 
that if you buy an estriol cream, you need to buy a progesterone. Always please take something away from here today. The problem is estrogen's not being opposed. That's our goal. We are trying always to oppose estrogen. So if you're using an estriol cream, you also want to use a progesterone. Okay, that, that should, oh, the, that's the problem today. Unopposed estrogen. estrogen, estrogen mimickers getting into the body. There are two other products here that are truly miracles if anybody ah, feels that they are estrogen dominant. If you've ever taken hormone replacement therapy, if you're on or have been on birth control pills, by the way, you haven't taken birth control pills for 25 years and you have a lot of fat here, that estrogen stays there for 25 years. The more fat you have, the more estrogen is in your body and the higher your risks are to age and, God forbid, get hormonal cancers. There are two products here that even, God forbid, if you've had a cancer that are safe, but please, if you've had cancer, make sure you Google this information. One is called DIM, dimendomethane DIM, DIM, from cruciferous vegetables of broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and cauliflower. It either comes in the form of a DIM or an indole 3 carbonyl. They're made a little differently, but basically they are the same. They do the same thing. What DIM does is change the bad pathway of estrogen. We have two pathways. One's a good pathway, one's a bad one. DIM from the cruciferous vegetables helps get rid of the fat. It helps hot flashes. It also helps not become a statistic of breast or ovarian cancer. It's incredible. Strang Cancer Center in New York did research years ago on either the indole, three carbonyl, or DIM. Look it up. Incredible. Yes. What if you juice the vegetables? One pill is equivalent to two and a half pounds of broccoli. Can't, pos can't possibly eat so much. Cannot. No, this is a capsule, so you can actually open the capsule up if you can't swallow a pill. You can't, when you eat it, it's really hard to eat the amount, but it's wonderful, I mean, the juicing. But, you know, when you juice, make sure that you save that fiber. Very important. You know, people who juice, they throw away all that, unless you have one of these, the Vitamix, Fiber is very, very important. So if you're inclined to juice, save your fiber, put it in the refrigerator, and then mix it with your juice daily as you're just juicing. As great as juicing is, it's still we must have the fiber. But you can't eat enough of this to really make a difference. It helps change the pathways. The other wonderful, wonderful product, for men and women is calcium d glucarate Calcium with a D, capital D, glucarate. It's on those papers. That's why I gave you, you didn't get a paper. That's why I gave you the papers. It makes life so easy. Give a little dot, sorry. Papers, I don't have any more. Oh, we gave them all out, I'm sorry. It says deglucurate, deglucurate. Deglucurate or calcium deglucurate. So on, follow the directions on the bottom. This one's by Thorn, and their suggestion is three times a day. And, but it depends. God forbid you've had a cancer, definitely do that three. If I never have come off, a progesterone, just glucurate, or a gym. To me, I take many, many vitamins. I'm always cycling. But the most three items, something that I take all the time, daily, uh, six days a week, is the deglucurate, a gym, 
for and a progesterone. And I forgot to tell you something. This is really important. What you have left on your fingers, lady, after you put it on your skin, put on your complexion. It's wonderful to prevent wrinkles. Helena Rubinstein and Esther Lauder years ago made all their cream with food hormones. They were very expensive, and the reason that they stopped was because the FDA came out with all, all these rules and regulations. But it's wonderful for your skin. Move, feel better. Remember what I said when I first began. And let me repeat this. When hormones are chemical messengers that tell the body what to do, when to do it, and why. They rule over the entire endocrine system. It doesn't matter if you're 12, 14, or 100 years old. Now, we're not meant to have pains, diabetes, arthritis. These are happening to younger and younger people. People tell me, well, my mother had high blood pressure. My grandmother had arthritis or osteoporosis in my genes. No, 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 no. Genes load the gun. Our lifestyle pulls that trigger. We are not our genes, but we come into the world and we use the same foods, the same recipes as our moms and our grandmothers. So we have a weakness from our family and we get that problem. You do not have to age. And we, rather, we do have to age because we live in time, but we don't have to decline. Yes? Good question. How long do you need to use a progesterone until you start to feel better? Some women tell me three days. If you're really coming from a hard place, if anybody has been on hormone replacement therapy, wants to come off of it, you have to call your doctor and say, how shall I wean off? Don't ask if you should come off. Boy, my earrings are like weapons here. <laughs> come, I have a black and blue mark. Because the doctor will not tell you you have to come off. Your question is, how shall I wean off? While you're weaning off, you begin to use your DIM, deglucurate, and your progesterones. If you're on hormones, it might take longer. It might take you um, the third cycle if you're cycling. So it depends where you're coming from, your lifestyle. But people tell me very, very quickly. It's because it goes right into the system. The doctors, they're naturopathic doctors that use the life flow. And because it's so micronized, they say that two to three hours after you put it on, they actually can tell from the saliva test. So it, it works very, very quickly, and it's truly wonderful. There are, I know everybody, when we were talking about libido for our husbands, you were all saying, well, huh, what about me? Yes, question. Yes, but the progesterone says three weeks on, one week off. So the only thing, that's my protocol. If you are into protocols, then do it three weeks on, one week off. My protocol, if you have no more period, is to do it every single day for a couple of months when it's saturated. But if you're into protocols, some people are. And the reason the three weeks, one week off is because it has to emulate the way our bodies used to work. The week we had a period, progesterone got very low. Libido. <laughs> Vaginal dryness. Ow. There is a product called maca. I cannot tell you the incredible difference that this will make for your libido, men and women. I love this maca powder. Wait, wait, just one moment, okay? What? Oh, more pages? 
Maca is in the cruciferous vegetable family. And the way that it was discovered, the animals that live very high up in the hills of Peru were procreating much more than was normal. When they went to discover why, they were eating the maca flowers. So maca became very big. It's an adaptive herb. What that means is that it's like a ginseng. You never have to go off maca. Women, even if you don't have a partner, our libidos is one of the most important things to get back. Libido gives you energy. Libido gives you motivation. Libido gives you caring about how you look, that you wake up every day and want to enjoy your life. It's not just about sex, which is a good thing too, but even if you don't have a partner, don't think, oh, well, I don't have a libido. Yes, we want to feel again. And this is incredible and it's very healthy. It's the same cruciferous that's in the gym. The broccoli, the Brussels sprouts is just made from maca. Oh, yes. And you can make maca brownies. <laughs> and have a party. But I'm not responsible. I have a drink. Yes. Wait. Yes. Yes. You're trying to get pregnant? Well, the, the only problem is that this doesn't have research. So if you're trying to get pregnant, I, I'm very cautious. No. No, I wouldn't. Progesterone, absolutely. But if you're trying to become pregnant, I'm very cautious. And because this has not been researched, guarantee in Peru the women use it all the time and in other cultures. But I, I would not, if it were me, no. I would not use it if I was trying to conceive a baby. Progesterone, yes. Because actually, if you go to a, a, a fertility doctor, because you can conceive, what do they give you? Progesterone, either to put it in the vagina or to take it. And they don't give the synthetic progestins. For women who are trying to conceive, they give natural progesterone. So that's, so anybody trying to conceive a baby, be very cautious. But progesterone, the more progesterone you have, the healthier you are. The women who have more progesterone, when they conceive, they actually have less uh, morning sickness. And anybody that knows somebody that's given birth and has the postpartum blues, because we're making these hundreds of milligrams, then we go to normal, and many women have the blues, put them on progesterone. Perks them up right away. Anyway, Maka, I cannot even begin to tell you the amount of emails and letters thanking me, men and women. It's incredible. I make a drink. Let me tell you my drink. I think it's on there, but let me tell you what I do. I put in a teaspoon of organic cocoa, a teaspoon of cacao. You know, cacao is where the, co the chocolate comes from. So healthy. And a, tea a heaping teaspoon of maca. I fill it up, a 20-ounce cup with hot water. Three quarters I fill the cup. Mix it, dissolve it. And then I put in cayenne pepper, turmeric, and cinnamon. And mix it all together. Now, how much? You need to figure this out. I like it hot and spicy, but again, you know cayenne pepper is great for pain. It's great for circulation. Turmeric is probably the best anti-cancer uh, nutrient we could take. Cinnamon lowers blood pressure. So I mix all this together, the cocoa, the cacao, the maca, spice it up, three quarters in the cup water, and that much, I'm into chocolate hazelnut milk. You could do almond milk, rice milk, coconut milk, hemp milk, no dairy, please, no dairy. Dairy is a poison food. There is no animal that drinks milk after it's weaned from its mother's breast except human beings. It does not make good bones. If I were to ask people here who has osteoporosis and osteopenia, 
The people who do are the ones who've had milk and lots of cheeses through their life. It actually leaches calcium from the body. Milk. And it causes tremendous allergies and mucus. It's not a good food. If you could get raw milk, that's a whole different story. But by the time they pasteurize and homogenize milk, they destroy the balance of the minerals. It does not get absorbed as a calcium. Dark green leafy vegetables. So when you're using your milk in your drink, don't use milk. By Pardon? Oh, if you can get raw milk, absolutely. It's very hard to get in most places. But yes, raw milk is good. But when you take this drink, I drink one, tw I do this twice a day, you will be energized. Your libido, you will start to feel again. By the way, anybody that comes to my lecture must throw out all holy underwear and pajamas. <laughs> Not allowed. <laughs> Depressing. <laughs> we want to feel good about ourselves again. Nothing holy. So this is wonderful. You could put this in a protein shake, really. You can make, you can cook this. It doesn't spoil. You could put this. You can put this uh, in anything. It's not good in water. It's not. It's crucifery. It, it doesn't taste great in water. But any where else that you want to put this. It's phenomenal. And besides libido, it translates into energy. Cacao is the bean that chocolate comes from. If you research C-A-C-A-O, cacao, you will be amazed from A to Z for health for your skin, for energy, for heart, your immune system, to heal stomachs, for uh, focusing. There are people lecturing all over the United States, really famous people, on the benefits of taking cacao. I'll tell you why I mix it with cocoa. I mix it because cacao is bitter. And I like, I mix it with a little cocoa, so it's not so bitter. By the way, if you get organic cocoa without sugar in it and you do this mixture, it is not a caloric drink. It's filling up to here. It'll energize you and you won't need the cookie or the piece of cake. Let me interject something right now. Although this is called balancing your hormones, I'm very much into anti-aging and I read and take classes all the time on how not to decline. There are many, many research programs going on now about how to stop the aging as readily. Many of them say many different things. One thing they all say, we age because we eat too many calories. Okay, so let me put that out there. I don't have all that time to go into it. The other product that I need to tell you about that has changed my life and many others that you might not have heard about. It's called astaxanthine. <coughs> A-S-T-A-X. It's on the paper. A-S-T-A-X-A-N-T-H-I-N. I began taking astaxanthine about eight years ago. I took, I took it every day. I took 12 milligrams. This is 4 milligrams. I took 12 milligrams a day for nine months. And I picked up a newspaper nine months later, and I wore reading glasses for 10 years. I wore, wore reading glasses from the time I was 53 to 63, 10 years. I picked up the newspaper. I could read it. I went to the doctor, the eye doctor, and he said, Well, Roslyn, this eye sees close, and that one sees far, but it won't last. Okay. Next year, went back to the eye doctor, and he said, well, yeah, this eye still sees close, and that sees far, but it won't last. <laughs> so I said to him, Dr. Mackman, the only thing not going to last is me as your patient. <laughs> Never went back. 
It is now in February will be seven years. I have not worn glasses. This is absolutely incredible, not only for the eyes, for your skin, for your heart. It's an antioxidant, but I t for your eyes. I, I take 12 milligrams a day. I read about it. I read about it in this Beyond book, because at that time nobody had heard about it. And I just decided to put it into my regime. I don't have that much time, so let me go through. And I'm here to answer some questions. I'm also doing another lecture tonight here. The other thing that's made a tremendous difference in my life and so many other people is silica drops. This one is made from bamboo. It's also the company of LifeFlow. Silica is one of the best things for your collagen of your skin, your bones, your nails, and your hair. I have never taken calcium. Now, I don't take it, never have, because it does not agree with me. We need minerals. Don't get me wrong. Very important to have a lot of magnesium and a lot of manganese and D3 and many other minerals. Very important. I could not take it. And I met a doctor 15 years ago, Dr. Klaus, if you want to look this up, K-L-A-U-S. And Dr. Klaus said to you, ma'am, whatever you called me, if you want to keep this long hair, to take silica drops. I've been taking this for 15 years. I just, my sister-in-law had white patches on her, her head. Six weeks on silica drops. And it tastes very nice. It has a vanilla, a uh, little light vanilla flavor. It has biotin, zinc, and a little border on. It will make a tremendous difference for your bones, your skin, your hair. You actually see your little eyelashes. And your, you know, sometimes they fall out. You actually see them glowing back. And it's very difficult. I told you my age. Better to grow long hair and have strong nails. They are mine. But again, it's just me. And so many of the people that I've counseled who not do this. So this is very, very important. So this to dropper under the tongue. Six drops morning, six drops at night. You can put it into something. It's pleasant. It's my own. So I don't share this with anybody, so I just put it in, into my own mouth. But you can put it in a little liquid or put it in your mouth and then take a little drink. It's very pleasant, it's so important for bones and skin and hair. And teeth, strong teeth. The other product that people forget about is iodine. As I, I'd like to ask a question. How many people here think they have thyroid problems? <clears throat> As I go around the United States, I would say probably 90% of the women either are on non thyroid medicine, a synthroid or armor, or they've gone to the doctor, they think they have thyroid problems, but the blood tests show they were in a good range. The blood test of thyroid is not a good blood test. The parameters of normal were done with people who have very severe thyroid problems. Go with your symptoms. The symptoms of thyroid imbalances are thinning hair, Brittle nails, weight gain, weight loss, anxiety attacks are almost always related to thyroid. There are two wonderful tests to do. One is the thermometer test. If you have these symptoms and you want to see if a little Iodine will help you if your thyroid needs a little help. Keep a thermometer at your bedside, and upon awakening in the morning before the bathroom, you put the thermometer under your armpit for 10 minutes. You document the number for five days. Normal temperature is about 
If you're 97 or lower, by the way, forgot to mention cold hands, cold feet. That's also a symptom. Sorry, forgot to mention that. So if you're 97 or lower, you can help your thyroid with iodine. There's another fun test. Go to the pharmacy and buy some orangey iodine that we used to put on the stores. We're not eating that one. It's poison. But make a two-by-two-inch mark on the inside of your wrist. If the color goes away in 24 hours, you desperately need iodine. This is the story of iodine. Many years ago, every doctor gave every patient a pill of iodine. They didn't know why, but they knew when they gave them the iodine, they felt better. And then they developed radioactive iodine, and people got very sick. So all iodine supplementing stopped. And in the 10 years following that, men and women developed these goiters, these thickening in the neck. When they gave them iodine, it shrunk it. So this was before television. So commercial bread put iodine in bread, and Morton Salt put iodine in salt. Then big business came along and took iodine out of the bread and put in bromine. Bromine, fluoride, and chlorine inhibit iodine from getting absorbed. And then all of us stopped using the Morton salt. Don't go back to it. Morton makes their salt with solvents, so solvents are from petroleum. We do want to do the sea salts. They're very healthy but they don't have much iodine in them. And people are hovering. The blood tests don't change, but you don't feel right. Energy problems are also related to thyroid imbalances. So, pardon me, test your thyroid. This is very inexpensive. I don't know how much it is, but it's very inexpensive. Uh, This is also Lyflow. I don't have all light flow here, but this is the light flow. It's a liquid, has no taste, it's like water, it's very inexpensive. Uh, three drops are 150 micrograms. There is research, and please research this. They say if we were to increase iodine and vitamin D3, we would lessen breast cancer 50%. Very important. It's Especially, even people who are on Synthroid can take iodine. Yes. Yes. Okay, again, she has nodules. I'm not a doctor, but Google it. But, Google it, please Google it. But, I will tell you the emails that I get about shrinking nodules. Again, not a doctor, but... It's all on, on a Google. Yes? And progesterone. Yes. Well, they, they do a blood test. Uh, doctors have a blood test that they do to test your T3, T4, And very often, people think I have a thyroid problem, and the blood test comes back normal. That blood test is not a very good blood test. Many naturopaths, NDs, do not follow it. They go with symptoms. Because the parameters that they got to do the norm of those blood tests were done with people who had very severe. So look at your body. By the way, everyone, your bodies are your best book of health. Learn how to read this body. Yes. Doctors thought, doctors... Yes, but my point is that that's related to the thyroid gland. So people who have anxiety attacks, whether you have a a thyroid gland, whether it's been removed, 
Whether you've been on armor or Synthroid, it doesn't matter. We're trying to get you to feel wonderful. And when the body reacts, it's saying something is going wrong. Disease just doesn't happen. It takes many, many years of you feeling a symptom before a disease happens. So please learn to listen to your body. I have to end because there are a lot of people, I'm sure you want to ask me questions, and I at some point have to go out to eat to come back here to do another lecture. So I do have the CD. It talks about a lot of things. It's a great thing for you to listen in your cars and then give away as a present. But I just want to close and say one thing more. Of all the machinery known to man, the most miraculous is the human body. If you look at the foods and give them up that you're sensitive and allergic to and you balance your hormones, the body will automatically heal itself. That is what some people call a miracle.